Madam Chief, I inherited this resolution. We had an incident on the apartment era where I believe that something less lethal would have perhaps uh, allowed us to not have used that level of lethal force at the time. Trying to avoid the negative impact on a police agency's legitimacy that can occur from a lawful but awful event such as the one that occurred in the church off the factory. An awful event, a tragedy, which prompted these discussions prescribed by a resolution that came from the commission in February of 2011. I came to the police department, felt that it was very important to try and put some best practice in place. That officers now, rather than engage a person that's mentally ill, are trained to stand down, create distance, call for a supervisor and or a CIT trained officer to de-escalate the situation. Since May of 2011, we did not harm another person in crisis that was just a danger to themselves. Commander Korea will speak to you a little bit about our crisis intervention training program and the policy as it would apply to less than lethal. And Commander Ali will tell you what research has been done on less lethal. There are 118 members of the patrol force who have received SIT training and are specially skilled for dealing with folks in crisis. This is on our way to the goal of 25% of the patrol force being SIT trained. For our presentation on the actual uh, taser, it will be Commander McAllen. CEW. What did it stand for? Controlled electronic weapons. So are you talking about tasers there? Effectively, yes. Okay, but to use that one man's death as a vehicle to do a PR campaign to limit the scope of the tasers, but still implement the tasers, and then maybe later have the scope be for everybody, is just to be a very clever way in bringing tasers into San Francisco, which has been vehemently resisted up to this point, and that's why the police department has had such a hard time. I feel it's a little disingenuous to use this man's death because I didn't hear when you said what happened in that incident that you brought out the uh, beanbag. Because tasers do have dangers. They do kill people, and we know that they kill people. The beanbag shotgun had been called for. It had not arrived at the scene. I will commit to you right now that if an officer is not CIT trained, an officer will never get a taser in the San Francisco Police Department as long as I'm chief. And I understand that as long as you're chief. We moved into the neighborhood in Western Edition, St. Francis Square, almost 30 years ago, 1984. Young boy, eight, I watched him grow up, and he is developmentally delayed, okay? And thank goodness in the co-op, everyone knew who he was, and we all watched out for each other. I would be afraid or concerned if he came back to visit, which he does, now because not everybody knows him anymore. Nothing replaces people knowing people and helping each other. I'm the advocate for the Mental Health Association of San Francisco. I was uh, homeless in uh, Seattle actually almost 25 years ago and someone responded to a potentially volatile crisis situation of mine without a weapon and with open hands and with the words, what can I do to help you feel safe? I've experienced crisis intervention. I believe the crisis intervention works. I've been living in this district for 38 years of my life. Born and raised in this Western Edition, right across the street from this park right here in San Francisco. When you became chief of police, it was in the middle of a police corruption scandal, correct? Yeah. With the hundreds and hundreds of cases dismissed based on police officers lying under the penalty of perjury, signing reports, misrepresenting what they were doing in the pen penalty of perjury. There was an investigation underway at the federal building, yes. Did you do your own investigation? Okay. Mr. Hunter. Yes, sir. We need to direct this discussion toward the taser. You have the police coming to the table with unclean hands asking for tasers, but no one has been held accountable to felony perjury charges against police officers. If you have people lying and committing perjury about misrepresenting facts, you can have people to use tasers as well to say someone resisted. When an officer say stop resisting and they they use that as a way to do damage to a person and jump on a person. And you have some that do do that. Cannot come to the table with unclean hands asking for something. 
Show some accountability in your department. We're, we're showing the, the public that when an officer does something wrong, this is what happened to him if you work for me. That message has not been sent. Once you send that message that if you doing things you should not be doing, you will be held accountable, then you can come to the table and ask for things of that nature. And I, and I agree with you what you said, that they must go through a serious training in order to receive it. But you still must come to the table with clean hands because you got a lot of unfinished business going on. I'm here with Dr. Rappers. I love you, San Francisco Daily News Center. One good thing came out of the state. They learned to use a net. I heard everybody talk about how you can go to duty without shooting, with a taser, on killing them with a weapon. Two officers with a net can stop anybody. But all they got is a knife. You're 15 feet away from it. And what we look at is the people and kids that get shot with tasers. There are people that shoot a kid and laugh about it. If you see my baby, we get that kind of information from all over the country about kids being shot, old people being shot. We're crazy. It's an intimidation of the public. That's what they are. Total intimidation. I tell you to shut up. If you don't shut up right then, boom! And what really hurt me is when I seen this, this young college kid down in the mission that they ran him down, ran him down with motorcycles and took his face and put it down in one of those wild fields and beat him and did everything else. That's the kind of thing that made people mad. When a whole lot of people in your department shouldn't be there. I support police. But I support good police. So that's what we need. And we don't need no cases. If you talk to people right and respect them, you don't have no problem about it. When you disrespect people, I see police come out here going in people's pocket yes. and half them, but everybody else looking. Yes. They might not be going in my pocket, but I don't like it. And nobody else likes it. So we need some cleanup going on in the department. Get rid of the bad stuff that you got. Stop hiring people that got a record, they'll kill two or three people over here, and then you hide. That's what we need. Thank you. There's been some misconception that these are taser meetings. These aren't taser meetings. These are less lethal option meetings. In reaction to what you had said, Chief Sir, that um, this is actually not a forum on tasers, and quite the contrary, you made this a forum on tasers by proposing tasers for the CIT. So this is going beyond that. If we were looking at draft proposals for other less legal forms, then that's what this would be about. But that's what we're working with. This is proposal for tasers. So yeah. frankly, sir, you know, you've made this initial tasers. I disagree. I propose less legal for CAT officers. Tasers. So there's an issue of tasers. Is it a replacement for guns or in addition to guns? It's in addition to guns. I, I want to hear from you. I'm the chief of police. And I want to hear from you. I'm the chief of police.